Apparently, people either love or hate the Lynx video, so we're going to watch it. So he starts off saying, I don't play the game anymore, I don't make content for the game anymore, and deletes his character. That right there tells me that it's an insane amount of bias. You know what? We'll just watch it. I want to go in with an open mind. I don't want to go in like already not liking it. You know what I'm saying? So Now, there were some people telling me the video was really good. Some people were telling me the video is really bad. I'm going to say this, though. The downfall of Final Fantasy, dude, this is like fucking clickbait as shit, and, and I originally didn't want to watch this because dude there have been so many videos man dude it's like a it's like a fucking trend it's like a fucking trend for content creators man when one content creator does something every other fucking content creator does something okay and they just go on this trend like there's been so many videos recently about like the downfall of 14 and it's just like bro oh. this shit happens every fucking expansion man no but this is different yeah okay like the Shadowbringers wasn't different. Like the Stormblood wasn't any different. Like the COVID lapse wasn't any different. People were saying it was dead. It's never going to be revived. Whatever, man. Anyway, we're going to watch it. For the first time, we're, oh, let's see. Final Fantasy is going through a bit of a rocky period. Okay, well, this right here, this right here is completely false. Okay, completely false. Now, I'm not trying to nitpick, but 1.0 was a disaster. Okay, but... Let's pretend that 1.0 didn't exist. This happened at the end of A Realm Reborn. This happened at the end of Heaven's Ward. Matter of fact, this happened during Heaven's Ward. Okay, so not only did it happen at the end of Heaven's Ward, it also happened during the Gordius Raid tier. Because the Gordius Raid tier pretty much killed the raid scene. Although I no longer play the game, I love 14 like no other game I've ever played. Here are my candid, honest thoughts on the game that I've never been able to share before. Hello, everyone. I was Lynx Kameli. For the first time in recorded history, Final Fantasy XIV is currently going through a bit of a rocky period. Although I no longer play the game, I loved FF14 like no other game I had ever played. I've put in over 12,000 hours in the 6 years that I played, and I've seen the game transform over time from a highly creative niche substitute for World of Warcraft to an unrecognizable mess of oversimplification and lack of creativity. The opinions and ideas- I don't know, man. I thought DSR was pretty fucking creative. I thought Top was pretty fucking creative. Ideas I will present in this video are feelings I have had for a very long time, much before I stopped playing the game, but I never felt comfortable sharing these feelings because FF14 has a critical issue. You. Or more appropriately, the FF14 community. Okay. It's no secret that a large amount of 14 players are die-hard lovers that will not accept any criticism or negativity towards their perfect game. Whenever someone brings up a problem they have with the game, they have to keep hey, adding me. disclaimers that everything is fine out of fear of invoking the wrath of the FF lovers. This is such a waste of potential because this dungeon could probably be badass, but instead they're going to make it brain dead easy to cater to casuals. And that's fine. That's, that's fine. A vast majority of their content is so that anybody can do it. And while that's good, and I'm not saying that they should take it away, they need to add some stuff that is a little harder that not everybody can do it. I'm not saying they need to like, I'm not saying they need to. However, oh, I community see. Okay. Sent okay. Okay. See this person completely missed my point. I do not give a shit if I piss off the community. So I imagine this is how I'm, so this is how it's supposed to be. This is how this person perceived it is that I'm speaking from both, from both sides so that, oh, I don't piss off the community. Dude, I don't give a fuck. Dude, I don't give a fuck what the community thinks of me, man. Okay. I'm going to keep streaming this game. I'm going to keep doing what I do. See, that's weird. See, that's very weird to me because if this person at all has seen any of my content, I shit on this game more than anybody. Okay. So this, this, this is like trying to paint a false narrative or some shit. I'm not saying they need to add some stuff that anybody can do it. This went completely over this person's head. I explain things in this way to separate what I personally want from what I think is good for the game. Because there's two different things. One, what I personally want, I want us to go back to Heaven's Ward and Stormblood. That's what the fuck I want. I want us to not have massive hitboxes. I want us to fucking get re fucking removed positionals. I want tank responsibilities back. That's what I want. But is it good for the game? Debatable. When you're trying to suggest things for the game, you have to keep in mind that there's more than one audience. Because one thing that a lot of people don't understand is that this game is meant for everybody. Now I know that's like, well, yeah, every game. Is, no, this game is meant for everybody, which means shitty ass players and super good players. So you have to find some middle ground. 
okay? What I value in this game, I value rating, I value like ultimate clears, that's what is important to me. Some of the best moments that I've ever had in this game was when I cleared an ultimate. When I cleared DSR and top with my EU group, I love those guys. <laughs> I would do anything for those guys. And you know why? Because we went through an experience, okay? We bonded, okay? <laughs> Now that moment when we cleared top, that was like one of the peak moments. Like DSR was the peak, you know, then top was another peak. You know what I'm saying? But this game is for everybody. So that was my insane moment. That is what I cherish the most. But that is not to discredit. Let's say you're really into the story and your favorite character either dies or does something great or something like that. That moment for you is no less important than the ultimate moment for me. So that is why I explain things the way that I do, because I am on everybody's side. I want the game to be better for everybody, mostly for mid-core players, because dude, like casuals have so much to fucking do in this game, man. Like, you shut the fuck up. You casual motherfuckers, you shut the fuck up. Well, I didn't get a Boja. Shut the fuck up, man. You got nightclub, RP. Get the fuck out of here, man. Fucking maps. All that bullshit. Shut the fuck up. Midcore players get shit on, man. I don't want to hear shit. And also fucking hardcore raiders, you shut the fuck up too. You got two ultimates this expansion. Get the fuck out of here. You you don't to, you fucking go take a break. Go play Baldur's Gate 3. I recently put in 270 fucking hours. That was amazing. I understand people want more from the game, but... People are looking at it the wrong way. If you want more from a game because you love the game so much, that's a good thing. But you also have to accept the fact that this game is for everybody. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks that it is because if it was up to me, we'd have a lot more rating. We'd have more ultimates. We'd have a lot, we'd have better criterion, you know? But do I give a shit about a lot of the casual stuff? No, I don't. I don't. I don't give a fuck about that. I don't give a shit about the, about the fucking dungeon that I'm talking about here. This dungeon looks looks cool aesthetically, but I did it once and like, okay, cool, whatever. I'm never going to, I mean, I guess I'll do it for expert, I guess. My point is, is that even though I don't care, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that I don't care because what I want is not the best for the game. Okay. People love this shit. There are people that love these dungeons. They love that they're that easy. This game is supposed to be for everybody. So because a game is supposed to be for everybody, there's not one single category that is going to be satisfied. Okay, look, I'm going to, look, where's my, where's my paint? You got a cup, okay? Now this cup is FFXIV. You cannot overfill this cup. Okay, so in part of the cup, you have this casual bullshit. And this part of the cup, you got mid-core bullshit. And in the top part of the cup, you got the big dick shit. You cannot overfill this cup. Something has to give. You cannot have a full cup of big dick, a full cup of midi, and a full cup of casual bullshitty. That's not how it works, man. There's only so much space that you can do shit with, okay? Can we just have a bigger cup? That's the goal. That is the goal. But unfortunately, this is where this comes in. Acceptance. You know what dictates acceptance? Yoshi Ma fucking P. That's what dictates the acceptance. Yoshi decides how big this cup is. Casual people complain about hardcore rating. Hardcore raiders complain about too much casual shit. Meanwhile, the midcore people are just like, yo, at least you motherfuckers got something to do. Okay, well, that's not entirely true because like the hardcore raiders, I don't have shit to do it. Yo, you casual motherfucker, shut the fuck up. You casual motherfucker, shut the fuck up, man. They make healing easy. They give you so much shit, you know? I didn't get a relic. Just go do 24 alliance raids. You want to do the relic? Then challenge yourself because that's what casual fuckers tell us to do. Just challenge yourself. Just make your own fun. Then the next relic step, you're not allowed. You have to dump all your tomes right away. You can't spin it on the relic. You have to farm just alliance raids for the tomes. There, boom, challenge yourself. You got your fucking relic. Get the fuck out of here. Same straw, man. Look, I'm, look, I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding, man. I'm just joking. I just love the game, but you have to accept that it's for everybody. That is why I try to explain things the way that I do is because 
as a content creator, if you really want the game to succeed, you have to understand that the game is for everyone and that just because you don't like something or you don't participate in a certain activity of the game, that doesn't mean that it should be gone from the game. Like, I'm not a fan of Island Sanctuary, okay? I don't think they ever should have put it in the fucking game. But some people absolutely loved it. And that's cool that they loved it. Are they getting rid of it? Fuck yeah, they are, because it's trash. But just because I think it's trash doesn't mean that other people don't like it. Like, see, this is already off to a bad start, man. I'm not gonna lie. Like, this person is trying to create this narrative that I'm afraid of what the community thinks. Has this motherfucker ever watched my stream? Ha has, has he ever watched my stream? Dream? Dude, I shit on this fucking game more than any- well, okay, I mean, me and Arthur's- sometimes I do it more than Arthur's, sometimes Arthur's does it more than me. But my point is, is that the reason why I explain things in, in the way that I do is because it's important to me that I think about as many different people as I possibly can. That is why I explain things in the way that I do. FF lovers. This is such a waste of potential because this dungeon could probably be badass, but instead they're going to make it brain dead easy to cater to casuals. And that's fine. That's, that's fine. A vast majority of their content is so that anybody can do it. And while that's good, and I'm not saying that they should take it away, they need to add some stuff that is a little harder, that not everybody can do it. I'm not saying they need to like, I'm not saying they need to. However, community sentiment seems to be declining for the first time at in ever i mean zeppla ff14's dude we literally had a, a decline of players during gordius we literally had a decline of players at the end of last expansion at the end of stormblood this person has no idea they said they've played for how long six years they said they have twelve thousand hours this is the first time that they've seen a decline that's just wrong zeppla ff14's beacon of positivity and happiness released a 36 is she a beacon of positivity and happiness? I never thought that. I thought that Zeppla expressed her concerns about the game. The point is, is that basically even Zeppla like was like broke down. You know what I mean? So that's the point. But I never thought she was a super overly positive streamer. I guess that just depends on how you perceive it. Zeppla, FF14's beacon of positivity and happiness, released a 36 minute video going over all of her issues with FF14's current expansion and larger core issues with the game as a whole. Now, this was surprising. I mean, that's like a WoW player saying World of Warcraft is actually a good game. Like, that is beyond controversial. And yet, it seemed to go over well with a large amount of people agreeing and seeing through the Yoshi P indoctrination, criticizing the game for its legitimate shortcomings. So, clearly, things are changing. Hence, me... I feel like that this person wants more out of the game, and while that's fine, they have the wrong expectation of the game. Final Fantasy has always done the same thing. Now, is that good? It's good and bad. It's bad in the sense that it leaves players wanting more, but it's good in the sense for you know when the content's gonna come out, you know when to play, and you know when you can take a break. Even though while it leaves you wanting more, there are some good benefits about the schedule of 14. Me finally feeling comfortable to talk candidly about a game I used to love and genuinely want to see succeed. I'll be bringing up four main topics in this video. However, I won't be discussing the story since I'm a story skipper, so I don't have much to say on that. And it does seem to be one of the last remaining good parts of FF14. Oh. What? Hmm. Okay. Topic one, the formula is breaking down. For anyone that has played FF14 for longer than one expansion, we all know that this game operates on an extremely strict by-the-books formula with zero surprises. Okay. Every expansion has three Savage Raid tiers, three Alliance Raids, two Trial Bosses at launch, and a new one every major patch, accompanied with a new dungeon. I mean, there is zero room for going above and beyond. Just stick to what has always been delivered. And people are just simply getting tired of it. There is definitely value yeah. in knowing what you'll be getting when you pay for an expansion. I mean, if any of you have been paying attention to Destiny 2, that game is a complete RNG loot box of I've what never you'll get Destiny when you pay 2. for an expansion. However, the downside to being extremely formulaic is you lose the ability to excite people. No longer am I sitting at the edge of my seat watching every live letter stream theorizing with my friends on what they'll announce next. I know what's coming. Another 24-man raid. 
one new dungeon, a new trial boss. A this this depends on how you perceive it. Because me, I love it. And here and here's why I love it. Because I know when the fuck I can play this game. I know when the dead times are going to be. I can plan shit around this game. It's very easy. So me personally, I love their schedule. This person saying that people are hating it and stuff like that. Well, I just think that's incorrect. That's extremely biased. Like just because he hates it doesn't mean that everybody hates it. Just because he doesn't like it doesn't mean that it's bad for the game. Because personally, for me, I think it's fucking awesome. Another four bosses in the Savage tier. <gasps> Except actually, the final boss of the Savage tier is two fights that are half finished to form a five boss raid tier. Pff, whoa, dude. What if they just made one fight that was fully complete? Okay, sorry. Yo, we've had some pretty fucking intense door bosses, bro. <laughs> Dude, we've had some pretty intense door bosses, man. Did this guy do the current raids? I disagree with the fact that a door boss is half a fight. Like, I do not think that Laha Bread was half a fight. And I don't think that Athena was half a fight. I don't think so. I thought they were pretty fucking complete. All right, that's besides the point. I got a little off my rocker there. The point is veteran players that have been around for a few cycles of the 14 formula are just getting oh, anyway. out. And what anyway, if you're going to complain about the door bosses, complain about the fact that we get no loot from the fucking door boss and they don't give us extra loot on the true boss. Sorry, that's besides the point. I got a little off my rocker there. The point is veteran players that have been around for a few cycles of the 14 formula are just getting burnt out. And what's strange about I'm not. I don't think you can get burnout from this game. I think that this person is confusing burnout for boredom and burnout for wanting more and not accepting the game for what it is. They've never said they were going to give us more raids. They've never said they were going to give us more fucking ultimates. There has, they have never set that expectation. Can you want more? Yes, but you can't fault a company for delivering the same shit all the time when they're not promising more. It would be different if they were promising more. Basically, it's the angle of how you approach it. This video to me seems very bitter already. And we're not even five minutes in. I don't think that people are getting burnt out. I think people are getting bored, but that's normal because it's the end of the expansion. About this is Final Fantasy 14 has grown immensely. I mean, the popularity of this game has only gone up over time, which obviously means way more revenue. And yet, what's to show for it? In fact, some of you might not know this, but in Heaven's Word, we actually got two dungeons per patch. We've steadily been getting less dungeons with every expansion. If they take away these dungeons, then they can spend that time to put to put in something else. I don't give a shit about those dungeons, man. I think that the resources could be better used somewhere else. Now, do they put those resources in other shit? I don't think so. Remember the cup? Guess what, casual players? Your line just got a little bit smaller. Sorry to tell you this. They had to remove a dungeon. It's tragic, I know. But you guys got to remember this game's for everybody. Dude, why the fuck is mid-course so, so fucking big, dude? This is, dude, dude, this cup is deceiving as fuck. This is the cup of lies. Okay, look, the portions of the cup are not, they're not to scale. Expansion, <gasps> because you know what Square Enix does? Instead of investing the increased revenue to grow the game, they only ever move development to different pieces of content, never increasing the overall amount. Now, see, this is actually where I agree the with mystical them. Quest I think that they should add more to the game instead of just replacing stuff. But I've said this for years and they've never done it. And they've never like said they're going to do it. I guess until recently, until Dawn Trail, because Dawn Trail slated to have the most content in any expansion. So we'll see if they deliver. But I agree that I think that they should add more to the game. I think that because isn't isn't 14 like one of their highest grossing shit with all that extra money, you would would think they would put it back into the game. So on this, I agree 100 percent. I think that 14 needs more shit. But look now, for those of you that don't know, Square Enix is a business. Yeah, mm, they're a business. And you know what they like? They like money. And you know what they think when they see all this extra money coming in, but they don't actually do any extra work. They think. Oh shit, this is nice. Let's just keep doing what we're doing. There it is. So far in this video, I 100% agree with two things. One, the community is the partial problem, but I actually include this person for having false expectations. You have to be able to like differentiate what you want with reality. The reality is they don't need to put any more work into the game for it to be successful. Do we want that? Yes, I want that. This person wants that. But the problem is, they don't have to deliver if they don't want to.
question everybody's had this expansion is, where is Endwalker's Eureka and Bajja equivalent? Well, it's called Criterion Dungeons. No Ishgardian Restoration equivalent in Endwalker? Yes, there Criterion Dungeon, I don't think was supposed to be a replacement for Eureka. I just think they took Eureka and didn't replace it and just worked on something else. I don't think the target audience for Eureka was the same as Criterion because I'm going to be honest, I don't know who the fuck Criterion Dungeon is for because it's not for midcore people. It's not for casuals. It's not for hardcore raiders. I don't know who the fuck it's for. I do it once and I never do it again. But I will say this, this game needs a Eureka Boja type of thing. I don't know why it wasn't in this expansion, probably because they use their resources to make Criterion. Now, I don't know how their inner workings, you know, work or whatever this expansion should have had both eureka boja type and criterion the fact that it doesn't kind of sucks right but it's one of those things we all knew that when we were getting something new that something else was going to be taken away i knew that you should have known that now is that okay i mean the square enix it is but to me no it's not when this person says that there's sh that that where the fuck is eureka and boja i agree with that they fucked up in my opinion but the thing is is this remember the cup you cannot overfill the cup. When you put something into the cup, something has to come out of the cup. And it sucks, man. It sucks. It really does. It really does. And it's really frustrating. I have wanted more, more shit for this game for years and years and years. And it took years and years for me to finally realize and understand and get the fuck over that this is the cup. Okay, and you will not overfill this cup. You have got to understand it or it's going to drive you crazy. There is, it's called Island Sanctuary. Less dungeons oh. and storm. It's called Criterion Dungeons. No ish Guardian Restoration equivalent in Endwalker. Yes, there is. It's called Island Sanctuary. Less dungeons and Stormblood onwards? Well, that's to make way for ultimate raids. You see, despite FF14 exploding in popularity and the cash shop overflowing with overpriced gold. I don't think that the removal of dungeons was for ultimate. Making a dungeon takes significantly less time than making an ultimate. I get what he's trying to say is that they added ultimate so they had to take away something else. I just don't think that that thing that they took away was a dungeon. I think that maybe they just thought it was a fucking waste of their time. Dungeons and Stormblood onwards? Well, that's to make way for ultimate raids. You see, despite FF14 exploding in popularity and the cash shop overflowing with overpriced garbage to milk the... He's right. Yoshi mentioned they stopped doing extra dungeons to focus on savage raids. Do you have a, do you have any source for that? Bloating in popularity and the cash shop overflowing with overpriced garbage to milk the player base. Square Enix has never... I don't know, man. Okay, this is extremely biased right here because, dude, some of these cash shop items are so good. Okay, and see, see, this is, see, this is biased. Dude, how can you call this garbage? Look at this, man. This is sick, dude. I don't give a fuck about the price. This is just where you have to realize that Square Enix is a business, man. Okay? No, it's not bragging. It's just you guys are having the unrealistic expectations, man. Square Enix doesn't love you. <laughs> they don't, man. They love your money. That's just, dude, that's, that's what I'm trying to say, man, is that Square Enix is a business, okay? And, the re and, and it's a hard fact to accept, okay? It is a hard fact to accept. Th that's their angle, okay? That's, see, that's why this man is a genius, okay? That's why he's a genius. Where is that? Yeah. I'm on to you. I'm on to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to meet you next week. And when I do, when I do, I'm going to ask you about beards. I ain't going to bitch up. You know, I ain't going to, you know, turn into a bitch and bitch out. And I'm going to ask you about beards. Okay. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a whole fucking list of suggestions. I'm just going to hand it to you. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to hand it to you. Okay. Because last time I teared up. You know, I was so happy to see you, but this time I'm flying, I'm flying all the way across the ocean. Okay. Anyway, the overpriced cash shop, what cash shop isn't overpriced, man? There's always going to be something that's overpriced. Now I'm not saying that it's good. Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's good. I think it's fucking stupid that when you buy an emote, it's not account wide. I think it's dumb when you buy like, you know, a, an article of clothing, it's not account wide. I think that's, I think that's fucking stupid. I guess I just have a different mentality than a lot of people. And my mentality is I have accepted that if I buy something on this shop, I'm going to get fucked. And some people can't accept that. I'm not saying you're dumb. 
okay, for thinking that the shit's overpriced. I'm really not, okay? And I'm actually not disagreeing with this with this person on saying that the shit's overpriced. That's what I'm saying, right? Overflowing with overpriced garbage to milk okay. the player base. Square Enix had- The only thing I disagree with is the fact that he called it garbage. I think that some of it is bad. Some of it's reskin. It's obviously a scam. But there are some awesome fucking things. And the cash shop overflowing with overpriced garbage to milk the player base. Square Enix has never added content to the game, only replaced content. And this formula yeah, is I agree. just getting stale. Do I really want to spend. Getting stale happened to me probably back in Stormblood. You have to accept it. That's just the way this game is. It's good and bad. We talked about that earlier. Getting stale now? No. It got stale years and years ago. It got stale back in fucking Stormblood. Getting stale now? I think that it, dude, dude, nothing's changed, man. Like, nothing's changed. It got stale like two expansions ago. Spend $15 Except a month just to do. Acceptance sucks. <laughs> Acceptance sucks, man. The devs literally said, go play something else. That's how confident they are, man. That is how confident they are. What game tells you to go play another game? When the devs are literally saying, no, we're not putting anything more. Go play something else, you fuck. When they literally say that, you have to shut the fuck up. That's the acceptance part. Do another 24-man raid that is exactly like the ones that came before it. Topic two, repetition breeds apathy. Wait, hold on. What was the... Beyond uh, just... Okay, the formula is breaking down. Okay, well, I actually completely disagree with the formula is breaking down. How is the formula breaking down? If anything, the formula is stronger than ever. I don't see how the formula can possibly break down if they have continued to deliver what they've said and it's been extremely consistent ever since the game was out. Does he mean effectiveness? See, I don't know because he also references a chart where the game is more popular than ever. So if the game is breaking down, but it's more popular than ever, and the formula hasn't changed, then how is it breaking down? He's saying the formula is breaking down because he finds it stale now. What needs to be said, the formula is breaking down, is the formula is boring. That's what should be said. The formula is boring. And I 100% agree. Two, repetition breeds apathy. Beyond just sticking to the formula for content releases, FF14 has also lost all creativity when it comes to encounter design, which was arguably- What? No. No, I don't think that's true at all, man. What the fuck? I think that the raids in this game are phenomenal. I think they're amazing. Top? Lost all creativity? DSR? Lost all creativity? I wish this person would have stated when they stopped playing the game. The raids have gotten more creative than they were. Has also lost all creativity when it comes to encounter design, which was arguably FF14's greatest strength outside of the story for years. In fact, one of my most popular videos on this channel is me selling the game to WoW players on how great the boss encounters are. But again, for those of us that have been around for a while, we have started to see the utter lack of innovation when it comes to boss design, even in the ultimate fights. Every mechanic is just a random combination of group stacks, prey markers, tether grabbing, limit cut, tower soaking, or god forbid clock spots. I mean, it's all been done before. There is no interesting new mechanics okay. that challenge your gameplay ability. If you're a veteran player- Whoa. Okay, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. I got something to say, but maybe he'll cover it. Four, there is no interesting new mechanics that challenge your gameplay ability. If you're a veteran player or no one, tell me if this sounds familiar to you. Oh, this mechanic is like this other mechanic in that other boss. Every boss is just a reskin of mechanics used in previous fights over and over. All you have to do when learning a new Final Fantasy XIV boss mm -hmm. is find the safe spot because do you know what every FF14 mechanic in existence is? Stand and let thing resolve. Seriously, when I had this realization is when I lost all interest in FF14 encounter design. Stand and let thing resolve. That is every mechanic. There is no... When a mechanic goes out, you solve the mechanic. What else are you supposed to do, I guess? No innovation to the gameplay. Okay. Just simply a new twist on stand and let thing resolve. Where other MMOs have moving platforms that require careful jumping, boss attacks that can be countered, which dynamically changes the fight every pull, or using height and gravity to create fun moments, all FF14 has is stand and let thing resolve. Can't you apply that same logic to a platform? So 
you stand and you let it resolve. Okay, so you move and you jump on a platform. So instead of standing, you're jumping. I guess what I'm trying to think about is how else are you supposed to like resolve a mechanic? Okay, so you use like gravity and shit. Maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. Okay, so this mechanic is you have to jump in this hole. I guess what I'm failing to understand here, I guess what my issue is, is that how are 14 mechanics more boring than... I guess, moving on a platform. And the counter system, that's just not this type of game. That's just not... Like, the counter system wouldn't work in this game. That's like your expectation, right? Like, you can't take something from another game that the combat is completely different and put it into this and, like, try to make it work. Because chances are it's probably not going to work. To do when learning a new Final Fantasy XIV boss is find the safe spot because... See, this is so biased, man. This is so biased because I did blind prog during Uwu. And, dude, when people first saw this mechanic, it was mind-blowing. Like, people were like, what the fuck is going on? When he mentioned, you know, stand and let things resolve, I thought he was going to talk about, like, like trios. Like Yukob. Like, okay, so my personal favorite type of mechanic is one where you have to DPS the boss and resolve the mechanic at the same time. Those are the type of mechanics I like. When the boss flies away and you just have to do the mechanic, I think that that is way more boring. But when this was out, people had no idea how to resolve this shit, okay? You know what people did? To get past this trio, they just mitigated it because this diagram or whatever was made way after Blind Prog. I don't see the difference in jumping into a hole to get rid of a debuff or whatever the fuck you have to do or jumping to a new platform. How is that different than this shit? Maybe you want something else, but for me personally, I think this shit is insane. I think that the mechanic, like the creativity in the in in some of these trios, is absolutely insane, man. Like, is jumping that really important? Is fucking with gravity that really important? I don't know. I guess I've just never thought about it that way. Stand and let thing resolve. Seriously, when I had this realization, is when I lost all interest in FF14 encounter design. Stand and let thing resolve. That is every mechanic. There is no innovation to the gameplay. Just simply a new twist on stand and let thing resolve. Where other MMOs have moving platforms that require careful jumping, boss attacks that can be countered which dynamically changes the fight every pull, or using height and gravity to create fun moments, all FF14 has is stand and let thing resolve. This is so biased, dude. This is bitter. Like in other MMOs, you do the same thing. There's stacks and there's spreads. I'm sitting here trying to think. Like, I don't know what this means. Grab the tether and let it resolve. Go to clock spots and okay. let it resolve. Hide behind the rock and let it resolve. And this repetition of reusing old mechanics over and over on top of a non-changing gameplay formula leads to apathy. No longer are we challenged and... Bro, this is what I don't understand. Everything that he just said, stand and let thing resolve, in, the, in this example right here. Asked to improve our gameplay ability, we are simply tasked with finding the safe spot and standing there until the thing resolves. And challenge that's finding all that's how it's always been. The safe spot and standing there until the thing resolves. And challenge in FF14 has actually been going backwards. The game is not even maintaining the difficulty it used to have, but actually making everything easier and easier. Mm. Topic three. See, this is my problem, man. He didn't give an example. This is why I think that it's bitter because I just cannot understand why jumping into this hole slightly or very briefly because it messes with gravity. I just, I don't see how this is any better than what you do in Final Fantasy. Now, maybe I'm missing something and you guys can explain it to me. But from what I see, all you do to resolve this mechanic is you just jump in this hole. Is that it? Okay, at the right time. Okay. How is jumping into a hole any different than moving into like a puddle to cleanse a debuff? That's why I don't understand his whole point on standing and let things resolve. I don't understand this. Like he needed to give better examples because jumping to a platform. Okay, so instead of standing, you're jumping. But this is actually kind of misleading because you have to move around. It's not like you're just standing there. You have to actually move your character. So this is a little bit misleading. I just think this is bitter.
It's about creativity. If you add another dimension like height, the fights can be more fun. I mean, fun is subjective because I think, in my opinion, the raids in this game, like DSR, top, the current raid tier are amazing and they have nothing to do with height. Yeah, so you mentioned E4 Savage. E4 Savage is one of the best fights ever made in this game. And there's also been height mechanics before and they actually weren't well received. So they stopped doing them. People hated uh, whatever the fuck that eyeball's name was. A8 Savage also had a height mechanic, but it was, but I mean, was it really a height mechanic? Like not really, it was just be on the safe tile. I think that fun is subjective and I don't think that because this game doesn't have a height mechanic or jumping on platforms that it makes the raid design bad or boring. I don't think that at all. As far as the, the mechanics being difficult, have you ever done P3? You ever done P3 and got the spread? You know what I'm talking about because on those runs, you don't clear. Run it back. Hope we get stacked. I just, I guess I don't agree with this. I don't agree with just standing there and letting the mechanic resolve. If his two examples are simply because of gravity, because of different heights, and because of jumping on platforms, I think those are extremely weak examples and they're not really needed in this game. If Square Enix were to put them in the game, I mean, I guess it would be fine. They've already been in the game anyway. Our current door boss has different panels. Is that not creative? Do you have to jump across the panel? Like, I guess what I'm trying to say is I fail to understand how jumping across a platform or a moving platform is any different than moving to a designated location to resolve a mechanic. You're literally doing the same thing just in a slightly different way. I just, so no, I don't, no, I don't agree with this. I think this person is just bitter about the raid encounters because DSR, Dude, how can you say DSR is not creative? Dude, DSR is one of the best fights I've ever done, if not the best fight I've ever done. How is top not creative? Dude, I hate top, but it's it's awesome. I hate it, but it's awesome. I feel like that this person is just bitter and either something happened to, happened to them, to their raid group, to their content, to something, something negative happened. And they're trying to blame the game or they're trying to jump on the 14 is dead wagon or they're trying to make up things that aren't there. The encounter design has got more creative over time. If this person was going to complain about design, he should complain about the two minute window, which I don't know. Maybe he does, but the two minute window is garbage. Healers right now are garbage. That is a problem. Not encounter design. Encounter design has gotten more creative, more intense. Okay, look, we're going to make a new cup. This is fight design. Now you have mechanics, job design, DPS, and balancing. You cannot overfill this cup. So over time, I will explain it to you. DPS and balancing was like this. It was much smaller. Job design. This is like right now, okay? Now, like I said, you cannot overfill this cup. Job design is shit right now because every fucking job plays the same. Mechanics, we'll take the current raid tier and we'll take top. So in top, the mechanics are insanely intense, okay? In this current raid tier, there is a ridiculous amount of body checks. The reason why they make the mechanics so hard is because the DPS is a fucking joke. The job design is the way it is so that they can make the mechanics harder because you cannot overfill this cup. So if you make the job design harder, let's say you make the job design harder, then that means the mechanics have to be easier. Do you see what I'm getting at? The point of this cup is whenever you design fights, there's a DPS threshold that you have to meet. There's a job design. How difficult are the jobs and how difficult are the mechanics? You cannot have mechanics that are insanely difficult with jobs that are insanely difficult. If you were to take our current fight design, like our current mechanics, and put them in Heaven's Ward, bro, there'd be no way. There would be no fucking way. Nobody would clear shit. Can you imagine doing a limit cut at the same time you're fighting fucking Blaster and Brawler? Bro, there's no way. There is no way people will clear that, man. On top of DPS, you can't have all of these. There's only so much room for DPS, job design, and mechanics, okay? Now, in our current expansion, they have chosen to do this, guys. They have chosen to put a vast majority of the difficulty of the fight design on mechanics. Playing the job itself is not that hard. The DPS checks are not that hard. 
the mechanics are hard. Just simply a new twist on stand and let thing when resolve. This, when this person says this, they must not have played recently because in this expansion, the raids are fucking hard, man. At least the last two raids have been hard. DSR was insanely hard. The top was even harder. The creativity from the raids has gotten better, not worse. If, they're, if he's going to complain about something, complain about the job design like everybody else, not the actual raids. Now, here's one thing that I 100% that I agree with. Stack, spread, limit cut, tank busters, that type of shit, that is repeat shit, all right? But you also have to keep in mind, there is only so many ways that you can deal damage to the party. There's only so many ways that the party can deal damage. And you also have to remember that this game, it normally is extremely balanced, okay? Like, look at, you know, look at Shadowbringers, look at, you know, Stormblood for a majority of it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, well, besides the first part. But for more, a, a lot more cases than not, this game is insanely balanced, okay? And it's because of the fight design, all okay? right? It's, it's because of the way that they design this shit. I don't agree that the fights have gotten less creative. The same shit in the fights now were previous, but they have added more and more and more to it. So when you add more stuff to it, to me, I don't understand how that is less creative. Now, if this perspective is, well, there's too many stacks, there's too many spreads, there's too many, you know, tank busters or whatever. Okay. I understand that. I agree with you, but there's only so many ways that you can deal damage, man, because 80% of the fights are the same mechanics you've seen again with 20% interesting, but not enough creativity. I don't know, man. I'm fine with the, I'm fine with the raids, man. I don't know if that's copium or not. I really enjoy the rating in this game. The rating in this game is why I play. I like role responsibilities. If I was going to complain about the design of the raid, I would complain not about the bosses, but about the jobs themselves. I think that there needs to be more tank responsibility. I think that they need to not have massive hitboxes. I think that the tank busters either need to happen more often or there needs to be less defensive cooldowns. I think that during a two minute window, basically just the two minute meta needs to go. I'm not a fan of it. I've never been a fan of it. Uh, some abilities, I am a fan that they change to one minute, like in a release, like delirium, that type of stuff I think needs to be on one minute. Having an ability you hit every minute is more fun than every minute and a half. But at the same time, you can't have every ability be a minute and every ability be a two minute. There has to be some room for optimization there. If I'm going to suggest something for fight design, it would be that. If the jobs are harder to play, but the mechanics are slightly easier and the DPS check is harder, I think that is a better mix of the cup than what we have now. That's my opinion, but it doesn't have to do with the creativity of the fights themselves. I think the creativity of the fights themselves are, I think they're fucking awesome. I don't know if that's because I'm a simp for Final Fantasy. It could be. I really enjoy the rating. This is my favorite game to raid in. Of all the MMOs I've played, this game is my favorite to raid in. I love the fight design. I love the role responsibilities. I'm a big fucking fan of the combat in this game. I fucking love it.